Hey there, I'm that Scottish Nerd that brings you Pokemon TCG content as well as gaming and entertainment related videos. So if any of those things interest you, be sure to hit subscribe down below as I do upload videos multiple times a week. In today's video we have Theme Deck Tuesday, this is where I take a theme deck, review it, as well as play out some matches with it to show off how the deck works. There are timestamps in the description as always, so let's get into the video. Here are the contents of the Growth Clash theme deck from the Heart Gold Soul Solver era. As you can see, it is a primarily grass based theme deck, but we also have a fighting Pokemon in here as well as some colorless Pokemon. The main star of the deck is, of course, the Meganium, as it is on the box art and everything, but unfortunately, we only get one copy of it, which is a bit bit of a shame as it is the main attacker and it definitely has the best attacks here with its sleep powder attack for one energy dealing 30 damage and putting defending Pokemon to sleep. Definitely a good way to stall if they're able to stay asleep and then that giant bloom attack dealing 60 damage and then healing 20 from itself. Definitely a good way to keep it alive and stay within the game. Unfortunately we only get a one copy as I said but then we have a thick basic line with the 421, along with all of the other Pokemon, we have a lot of basics, four copies, and the only two count that we have is a Pokemon that isn't very good at attacking, let's just put it lightly, it is the Metabot here, which does have a nice ability, removing your grass Pokemon's weakness, which is good against those fire decks, but its attack is pretty lackluster. As for trainer cards here, we only have three supporter cards total, which is definitely not ideal whatsoever. We have one copy of Professor Oak's new theory, shuffling our hand and drawing six is always welcome, but when we only have one copy, we're hardly ever going to see it. And then we also have two copies of Bill, just drawing two cards. Again, reasonable, but definitely not up to today's standards. We have a couple of other trainer cards here like Pokeball and Pokemon Communication which can be good for searching out our Pokemon but overall the deck is not going to hold up to any of the modern decks. As you'll see here we did get lucky and find another person that was playing a Heart Gold Soul Silver era deck. It was an Undaunted deck and even that was able to beat us very easily so definitely not a good deck, I wouldn't recommend playing it, but let's get into some matches here. Be sure to give the video a like if you did enjoy it at any point as well. Alrighty, we're starting off our first match against the Blastoise Torrential Cannon theme deck. This is a fairly popular deck, it's not certainly not the best deck in the meta. And we do have a couple of supporters in our hand, which is good considering the amount of supporters that we run in our deck. So we might as well use Professor Oak's new theory. Get some new cards in our hand and see if we can get some other basic Pokemon. We do get Centrat, which is reasonable, and we'll go ahead and attack with our Sandshrew. We might as well deal some damage. Using Defense Curl isn't going to do a whole lot. It does prevent all damage during our opponent's next turn, but we do have to flip a coin and get Tails there. Or at least my opponent does anyway. And we see the attachment on our opponent's side as well as how. And they're going to be using a Timer Ball. It even got the evolution here for the Golduck. So my opponent is well on their way to be doing a lot of damage. And they're even hitting us for a weakness. So already in our first match you can see that using an old theme deck is definitely not a good thing to be doing. I would definitely not recommend it whatsoever. We use Bill here and we just draw into even more energy cards. That is not looking good for us. Let's go for a switch and we can go into our Sentra, attach an energy to it and we might as well poke our opponent for a little bit of 10 damage. So we have 20 hole damage on our opponent and they already have the Golduck ready to go to start dealing 90 damage every single turn. And they even get the Blastoise as well, although they do miss the energy which is fair enough. Of course they're going to have it in their hand anyway since this is a theme deck battle. You're always going to have energy in your hand pretty much. Let's put the Sandshrew back up. Maybe we can go for a Defense Curl and try and hope that our opponent gets a Tails. Let's go with that. Maybe we can stall out, but nope. My opponent using that ability on Blastoise, but then to look at the top cards of their deck. Six cards I believe. 
and then they can attach any water energy that they find there onto their Pokemon. They're even going for a copycat, not that they need it, considering we only have a couple of Pokemon in play that they can easily knock out with this Golduck. So there goes our Sandshrew. All we can do here is attach to our Caterpie, I mean not, not that we need it because it only requires one energy, but we can attack for 20 damage and with weakness that's going to be dealing 40 damage. Getting close to taking out the Golduck but not quite close enough and my opponent is going to be BMing us here a little bit as they already have what they need in order to get the knockout. Yep, here, here, here they go, really BMing us and going and attacking with the Blastoise to deal twice as much damage as it, what they needed. There's our first abysmal game and let's get into another one just to show off and really hammer home how terrible this deck is in the metal. This is unheard of, I've never seen anyone else using an old deck like this but my opponent is using an undaunted deck which is absolutely insane. So let's try and see if we can get a fair match up here considering my opponent is playing a similar power level deck to us. Uh, let's see, my opponent has a Hounder in the active spot, he has a Jump On. Let's see what they have for us, they're going to be a Flipping Tails to do the 10 damage. And we can draw a card here. We have a Pokemon Communication that we could make use of. That would get us our Bayleaf that we can use to evolve, so let's go with that. We can put the Caterpie back into our deck and grab ourselves the Bayleaf here. Since we have the Meganium in our hand, we might as well power that up and start attacking with that as quickly as possible. We can even start attacking now, although we're only doing a little bit of damage, 20 damage. We might as well just pass it over to our opponent and wait until the following turn where we will have Meganium in play. We can deal 60 damage to our opponent. Our opponent's getting down another basic Pokemon and attaching to that and just see another attack from them which does deal enough damage to get a knockout considering Caterpie's pitiful HP. So we'll draw a, another card getting us a basic Pokemon which is great since we do need another one in case we get knocked out here. But we can evolve into Meganium and deal our 60 damage getting a return knockout on that Houndour. Going over to my opponent see if they have any kind of response for us. They have a Stunky here which has the double scratch attack which does require my opponent to flip two coins if they want to try and deal any damage at all. And if they do get the double tails then they won't be able to deal any damage. But we do see they have the evolution here so they do have the stun tank. The stun tank has fury swipes which is also a flippy attack. And we see my opponent's playing down the supporter card interviewer's question. They're able to get four energy out of the deck and into their hand. We see a bunch of metal energy as well as a dark energy. So they're wanting to try and power up some of their bench Pokemon there. And they flip a bunch of coins for a stunky attack. And they hit us for 60 damage, which is not good at all. So we're going to be attaching onto our Centrat. And we can hit our opponent for 60 and also heal off 20 damage that my opponent dealt to us in the previous turn there. Really seeing the power of Meganium's attack being able to heal itself, very coming in, coming in very useful here. My opponent going for an attack once again, he flipped 3 heads which is enough to deal 90 damage and get the knockout on Meganium. That is our main attacker going down unfortunately, so we're really going to be in a bad spot here. Forced to go in with the Centrat, and we can put down a couple of more basic Pokemon but it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. All we can do is hit for 10 damage and my opponent is going to be in an excellent spot here in order to take this game away from us. My opponent is putting down more Pokemon and attaching to them and we see another bunch of coins being flipped. Just the one heads this time luckily for us only dealing 30 damage so we do survive that attack thankfully. We get the evolution for Caterpie going into Metapod, removing weakness, definitely not going to be relevant in this matchup, but we can attack for 10 damage and that's going to be enough to get a knockout on our side. So we'll go back over to my opponent. We get the Sandshrew 
I'd love to get into the evolution sand slash there. It does have some nice attacks on it. And we see my opponent is going to be able to get a follow up knockout on us. So we can put in our Centrat, I think. Hopefully drawing into an energy card here. Excellent, we do. So we'll put down our Sandshrew and we might as well start continuing to attack for 10 damage. Goes back over to my opponent and they're going to be able to deal a whole bunch of damage to our Centrat. For 3 energy they're dealing 40 damage and dealing that damage with Skarmory every single turn is going to be all they need really to get a knockout on our Pokemon on these coming turns. We see a support guard from my opponent, Sage's Training. That's going to allow them to get some cards in order with their deck and give them some better draws overall. So they've drawn two cards and they had to discard two as well. But I'm sure those two cards are going to be useful for them. We see them attacking an energy after the evolution. And they're just going to be hitting us for that 40 damage, as I mentioned. So we just draw another Pokemon, we would love to get some energy here. <laughs> it's definitely not something that I would have thought I'd be saying in the theme deck format. Usually you want to be drawing cards and having supporter cards in the meta, but no, no, we definitely just want energy cards here. So it goes back over to my opponent, and they have, yeah, again, another supporter card. This is not looking good for us. They've had all of their supporter cards being played every single turn and I mean admittedly we have had a pretty dead start although we do only have three supporter cards so we can't complain too much but our opponent doing the fourth damage every turn is going to just wear through our deck completely and really just chew through it faster than we're able to keep up with. See a Pokemon communication from our opponent, putting a Pokemon from their hand into their deck, and they can get a new Pokemon that they want to perhaps evolve into, or just a preferred attacker that they want to search out. And here we go, my opponent gets the Metagross, so they definitely want to evolve into that at some point, I'm sure. Although they don't have the previous evolutions just yet, so interesting that they took that over and nothing else. Let's go on with our Sentry, hopefully we can get a energy. We get the grass energy, I was looking for a fighting but I suppose we can go for a defense curl here and hopefully flip our heads. Nice, we flip it so we're invincible for this coming turn and we just have to do this for the rest of the game. Maybe we'll get lucky and deck our opponent out if we flip 24 more heads which I highly doubt it's going to happen, but we'll certainly see what, what goes down here. See another supporter from my opponent, and a basic Pokemon. They're going to attack us, but it's not going to be able to deal any damage. We get the fighting energy, but I'm inclined to attach it elsewhere, considering we'd only be doing 10 damage. Let's attach it onto our bench, and we can go for a defense curl again. We get the heads again. Okay, this is looking good. This is promising. Maybe we do have a chance of getting heads every single turn, but you got to figure that the game's going to decide that it's going to be Tails at some point, sooner or later. My opponent is setting up that Metagross that they got in the previous turn. We're getting the evolutions down now, and we're just dead drawing here completely, so I'm just going to go for a defense curl once again, and there it is, there's the Tails. My opponent's going to be able to deal damage to our poor little Sanctuary. There is the Metagross coming down from my opponent, that's going to be a big attacker for them. Has 130 hit points and it has strength, doing 70 damage. I highly doubt they're going to be flipping coins for the second attack there, but you never know. We'll attach the bench here once again and go for another defense curl. Getting the tails, so our opponent is going to be knocking us out during their turn and going down to a single prize card remaining. All we can do now is hope that we get the evolution to deal a little bit extra damage, but we're definitely going to be losing this matchup considering my opponent only has one prize card remaining. We get a Bill, our first supporter card of the game, as well as another Grass Energy. 
we can't even attack here because we don't have the required energy. So we'll just have to pass it over to my opponent. A little bit of a misplay on my part, but considering how far behind we are in this match anyway, I don't think it's going to be ending well for us. So I was lucky enough to find a deck that was at the same power level, but even then, we, their deck was more powerful than ours, unfortunately. Let's get into one more game in the ladder. I think the ladder has been kind to us today, considering that we're up against a Swamper deck. It's definitely not a deck that you see very often on the ladder. So, we're definitely going to have... <coughs> We're definitely going to have an advantage considering our typing against this deck. But considering the amount of draw that my opponent has, they're definitely going to be able to get set up a lot better than our deck. See our opponent attaching to the bench and just passing. Which, uh, okay, I guess it's not a seasoned player considering this Dunsparce literally has an attack which allows you to get three basic Pokemon out of your deck. But anywho, we'll just evolve here and we can attach an energy to our Metapod as well as using Bill to draw two cards. We get a Sand Shrew, we might as well play that down. And I think we could just pass over to our opponent here. We do have the Pokemon Communication, so I think we can use that on this following turn to get the Evolution for Centrat here. I can't remember its attacks, but its attacks are reasonable, if I remember correctly. So let's grab that right now. We'll put this Caterpie into the deck. We could even get Meowth, which draws us a card with Payday. But, oh, oh apparently we've uh, prized our one evolution, so that's not, not too great. So instead we're going to grab Meowth, since it has Payday. We'll put that into play. And we will attach to the active so that we can retreat or even start dealing 10 damage, I guess. Yeah, sure, we'll, we'll deal 10 damage instead. Oh, oh, apparently that is not the 10 damage. That looks at my opponent's hand. We have made a grave mistake here. See, the issue is, on the Pokemon itself, the scratch attack is on the bottom. But when you go to actually click on the attacks, they switch them around for absolutely no reason. So I just clicked to look at my opponent's hand and we saw that their hand is pretty dead, which is good, but also they're not playing the most optimally, so I think we should be fine here either way. They are finally attaching to that Dunsparce, but they're going to be using it to attack us, dealing 10 damage and also getting the heads on the flip to paralyze us. Just definitely not ideal at all. We'll attach a grass onto the Meowth. Since it has payday, we can go into that at some point. The thing about payday, I keep going on about it, but it does 10 damage and it allows you to draw a card, so it's just immensely better than our Centrac here, which just does 10 damage for the one energy. So my opponent has a Lady, that's going to allow them to search their deck for 4 energy cards. They're getting a whole bunch of fire energy cards, so I guess they're going to be wanting to attack with that. Uh, Slugma at some point, or even the evolution, and my opponent gets the heads on the flip once again, so we're still paralyzed. I think we can attach to a sand true and just pass it back over to my opponent. Hopefully, we get the evolution sand splash or even the fighting energy to go along with it, since it does have some reasonable attacks that we can make use of. My opponent's going to be hitting with the Dunsparce once again, and they have a third head in a row. This is unheard of. We're going to have to pass over to my opponent since we have nothing that we can actually do about this paralysis. We don't have any switch in our hand, unfortunately. See the energy attachment from our opponent, and the Dunsparce attacking again. And I think my opponent is rigging the game here because they've just got a fourth fourth heads and yeah I'm just lost for words there because there's no way that you're able to flip heads that many times so we'll get a new hand with our Professor Oak definitely a good idea and we have a Pokeball we can make use of hopefully we get heads of our own we do very nice since this game is rigged on both sides I guess 
and we do get the sand splash that we can start evolving and attaching energy to here and we have the Pokemon Reverse, so I'm kind of tempted to use this just to bring up something else that my opponent has. Um, I think we'll pass for now. I mean, the Sentrat is almost dead, so we could just pass and let the Sentrat get knocked out if my opponent's going to be knocking it out. We only have 10 HP remaining, as you can see. So another attack from this Dunsparce is going to be destroying our Sentrat. My opponent gets a head off of the timer ball. It's the first tails that they've got in this match, but they are still able to get one evolution out of their deck anyway. Most likely going to be getting the evolution on Slugma. Macargo, that's it? Yeah, Macargo is the evolution, but now instead they're getting the Swampert line for some reason, even though they don't have the Mudkip just yet. Definitely want to get that Mudkip, they'd be in a good spot with that. But they're still attaching to the slug muscle, they're definitely wanting to use the Macargo to be attacking this match. And my opponent gets the tails on the Dunsparce attack. Not that it matters because they're knocking us out anyway. So we'll go in with our Sand Splash here. Its attacks are pretty good. They can use Fury Swipes to do a whole bunch of damage or just Poison Sting our opponent. And considering that they are weak to fighting, we can just use Poison Sting to get the knockout here. We'll attach a Grass Energy onto the bench, and we'll use a Bill to see if we can draw two cards. Okay, we can put this down, might as well. And then we will Poison Sting, finally getting a knockout and dealing some damage. Definitely would have been dealing some damage earlier if we weren't constantly paralysed, but never mind. We got a great prize here in Meganium, now we just have to find the Bayleaf Stage 1 Evolution here. My opponent puts up the Rotom, which is a good Pokemon to be attacking with considering that we're weak to water, so they are going to be able to get a knockout on us, dealing 260 damage, that's a lot of damage. So definitely knocked out there, and we're going to have to find a response here. I think we'll go in with Payday on our Meowth, sure we'll go with that, and see what we get, nothing too great. I think we could use Pokemon Reversal here, see if we get heads. We do, so we'll bring up a bench Pokemon and try and stall for a little bit. And we can keep attaching energy onto our bench. And we'll use Pity, deal 10 damage, and we get a card. Not a card that we wanted, but definitely would have liked to have seen the Bailey there. Well, my opponent finally gets the Macargo along with that Mudkip. So they're going to be starting to get the Swampert Evolution line out. It's definitely not good for us because that Swampert has an amazing ability which allows them to discard a card from their hand and then draw three cards. Very powerful. Used to be a very good theme deck in the meta as well until it just got overtaken by a whole bunch of other very strong theme decks. But my opponent here, using that Macargo, it has an ability letting them choose their top deck or certainly put a card from their deck on the top, so is choosing their top deck, essentially. It's going to get them any card that they want or need at any point of the game. And considering that we are a grass deck primarily, and they're going to be attacking with this fire Pokemon, I don't think this is going to end very well for us at all. And they are only dealing 50 damage, so Meowth is able to survive, thankfully and we can attach energy to a revenge Pokemon. So let's go with that, and then once again use Payday, just dealing a little bit of 10 damage, and then drawing another energy, of course. Because this deck has, what, like 23, 24 energy cards, so of course we're going to be drawing an energy card off of Payday every single time that we use it. And we probably still have about half of our deck being energy cards, that or Pokemon, specifically basic Pokemon as well considering the amount of evolutions, well, lack of evolutions that we have in the deck. So we see my opponent just gets the evolution, they're going for the Macargo ability once again, and then they're going to be getting a knockout here, dealing 50 damage to our Meowth. It's not a huge amount that we can really do about it. Now we do have weakness removed here with our Metapod ability, but we don't have any good attackers that we can combo with it right now. All we can really do is sit and poke for 10 damage with our basics. 
there is the attack, my opponent taking their third prize card. I think we'll just have to promote a Pokemon here. And we get another energy, of course. Definitely not what we want to see. I mean, we could attack for 20 damage with our Chikorita, I guess. So let's go with that. Attack a Fighting Energy. And there's over 20 damage. My opponent's Makargo has 60 HP remaining. So if we do that another three more turns, we will finally be able to take another prize card. My opponent gets that Swamper into play. It has that amazing ability that I was talking about. And it also has the Hydro Pump attack, which we've seen time and time again in the Pokemon TCG, dealing more damage based on the amount of energy that's attached to the Pokemon. We see my opponent using my cargo. And they're most likely going to be attacking here for the 50 damage. Now, we are removing weakness, so we are going to be surviving by 10. As you can see here, my opponent goes for the attack and they're not able to get the knockout, which is excellent. We also get the switch, so we can even switch into our other Chikorita, which is definitely what we want to do here. And then we can attach energy onto a revenge one and hit for 20 damage once again. Hoping that we get into a Bailey, but at this point I don't think it's going to be very likely that that happens. My opponent's attaching an energy onto the Swampert there, on the bench. Definitely a good attacker to be using, considering the amount of damage that they can potentially do. My opponent's going to have to two hit us here, and then we can hit into them for the 20 damage once again. And there we go, we finally see the attack from my opponent, 50 damage. And we get a, another Caterpie to be attacking with. Definitely not the best option here, but we'll put it down. And it does have an attack for 20 damage tackle. So we might as well go with that, as it would be uh, kind of sort of. I mean, it's not going to be surviving because it's only got 30 HP, but if we get the evolutions down for these Chikorita, then maybe. But. Uh, I don't know man, it's got retreat cost of 1, we're going to be losing energy attachments, just seems kind of bad all, all around. We'll attach an energy onto the Caterpie anyway, and we'll go for the attack, dealing with 20 damage. My opponent is going to be knocking out this Chikorita on the next turn, and then we can potentially just attack with the Caterpie to get the knockout. Or alternatively, my opponent could retreat here and attack with something else. But they did attach the energy onto the Swampert, so they don't actually have the means to attack with anything else. Bit interesting that my opponent isn't using the Macargo or Swampert's ability anymore. It's very unusual, considering those very strong abilities that you could be making use of. But we do finally get into our Bayleaf evolution, so we can make use of this Meganium at some point throughout this match. And we can use our Canterpie to take a knockout here. On the Macargo, finally taking our second prize of this match. Is a Fighting Energy, which is not going to be relevant considering the amount of energy that we have in play is more than enough for all of our Pokemon. And my opponent has some more Pokemon coming down here in the form of a Bomb of Snow, or Snover, I should say. We'll see another energy going on to the Swamper as well as the Risky Stretcher. Getting the Macargo back into my opponent's hand. So let's see if they have the Slugma at some point. Not sure why they didn't bother shuffling the Slugma and Macargo into their deck. But here we see they are finally using that ability on Swampert, discarding a card and drawing three cards. And they can use the Rotom here in order to get a knockout, doing a whole bunch of damage. Now we'll we will have to use our Meganium to get a knockout here, I think. And then my opponent is going to be able to respond with the Swampert, but I mean, we're not even getting a knockout since they have 90 HP, so nothing for us looks very good here. We will evolve into the Meganium, and then we can put down a Sanctuary, not that it makes any difference. And then we can put our opponent to sleep and deal that 30 damage. Hopefully, they stay asleep, they do. Okay, that's useful. We can definitely buy ourselves a turn with this and get a knockout on the Rotom. Although my opponent could potentially have the Switch 
or the Titan Lisa, which is also a form of switch. We see the Abomasnow getting energy from the discard pile onto one of their bench Pokemon, and putting it onto the Swampert, so they're really, really focused on building up a massive Swampert and getting a knockout with that. See a Nest Ball here. They're getting the Slugma, which makes sense since they did get that Macargo back from their discard pile last turn. And they're just going to have to pass it over to us. And that's going to be pretty much game as there's nothing else that we can really do here. We can take a prize card at least on this Rotom. And we can say that we took three prize cards in this match and just be thankful that we took three prize cards really with this deck. Definitely not a deck that's going to be able to stand up against any sort of theme deck that's remotely modern and remotely good anyway. We were lucky and fortunate to be able to play against some weaker theme decks and even a theme deck from back in the Undaunted Heart Gold Soul Silver era, so that was nice that we've seen that. But my opponent does have one prize card remaining and they have a whole bunch of energy on the Swampert so they're definitely going to be taking a knockout here. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying Theme Deck Tuesday with the old decks or if you prefer me reviewing and looking at some of the newer decks within the last 2-3 to three years. I've been That Scottish Nerd and I'll see you in the next video.